probably a crap ton of mistakes somewhere. I don't know. But this way, people can't start yelling late, 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 late. It's going to happen anyways. Watch. Late. Look at the chat. Late. Uh. Oh, they're already saying late. See, it says it's waiting on me. Ah, oh, see, we're live. With a Dove foaming body wash commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like dove, dove for men, men for less care. They need to make an automotive scented like body soap. Like it smells like race fuel and rubber. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, but that's not like no. a smell we look forward to. Yeah, no, the don't... smell means money. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> Oh, wait. Can they not hear you again? Oh, they're not going to be able to hear you again. What the hell? Remember last time it did this too? Hold on, guys. No, I, I got it. Translate for me. There, so there he is. He's here now. Sorry. Okay, now I'm back. <laughs> well, okay, so here's the thing. Like, because I started Skype, like, okay, so OBS and Skype are like independent, right? Audio controllers of each other. So yes. if you're being played through like one speaker, like OBS doesn't automatically hear that. You have to go in and configure it. But anyway, I did it, and I'm rolling the intro now. So whatever, intro for one. All right. Let's uh. Welcome to. Whoa, I got a weird thing on. Welcome to Tech Talk. Apparently, coconut monkeys like going somewhere, so we're gonna like say hi and shit. Can you can you say Sunday, Sunday, Sunday? No, say Thursday, Sunday. Thursday, Thursday, yeah. Thursday, Thursday, Thursday at the Metro Dome. I get you the internet. There Thank we you. go. <laughs> uh, so I was reading the chat earlier. Uh, I was sitting in here just How reading. Dare How dare you? Well, I mean, so I put the link up early this week, earlier than normal. Or not the link, but the, it was ready to go earlier than normal. And so I was curious as to like, what people would be saying based on this title. And you know what I've come to the conclusion of? What's that? Everyone just expects clickbait now. Like, everyone just... Or if you don't do clickbait, they will still call it clickbait just because that's how much of an expectation there is for clickbait. Mm. What's the opposite of clickbait? Uh, not clickbait. Reality. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway, th this is not. This is actually not a clickbait, clickbait. title. Uh, Nick is pursuing other opportunities. Hey. Well, fuck that guy. He was he was he was holding you back. Fuck that guy. Get him out of there. Oh wait, is Nick is Nick on the show right now? <laughs> Hi, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love big boy. Are you finally gonna go actually do something in your field of expertise with your your like still camera? Uh, maybe we'll see. Okay, so here's, <laughs> here's what I want to say. First of all, yes, Coconut Monkey is so he's going to still kind of be around here and there as a contractor type basis, but he's not going to be a full time employee any longer. But if you guys don't know this, he's got a double bachelor's degree. He's got a he's got a bachelor's degree in in business management, and he's got a bachelor's degree in photography. And working like on this YouTube channel was never like a, a passion, or I just turned down my volume. That was me that dinged. Um. Oh. It was never like a thing that Nick, I don't think ever, and you can speak for yourself, obviously, but we talked about this. This has actually been coming for about 90 days now. We talked about this months yeah. ago and preparing for this. And he's got, Nick is weird, weirder than you guys know. You want to know why? He loves packing. He loves moving. He loves organizing. That is not traits we look for around here in Jay's two cents. That's really weird. Just in general, like <laughs> life. When, when, when I got the studio, he was like, oh boy, are we going to move? I love moving. <laughs> <laughs> that that's true actually. I was really stoked on moving. So one of the things he's pursuing actually is a international log logistics position with a company that he's we've got some connections with. So I thought you said he was going to join a mover for a second. Like he was going to be starving like, students. <laughs> <laughs> Working on Pornhub says uh, Praytech Sheshank. You know their internships are pretty good. Pratik Sheshank. Is that like your cousin? No. Oh. <laughs> more money than god all of porn does i got a job offer from streammate you know that weird cam girl site mm -hmm. a guy that worked for it at microsoft actually went and worked there and offered me the job didn't tell me what it was until i went to lunch with him and then he told me what it was because the company was under some shell company name so that they didn't get a bunch of perverts applying for the positions uh, it was really weird did you hear uh, so speaking of tech news we gotta have a little bit of tech in here today while we just chat with coconut monkey on his how dare on you. his last week here of tech talk <laughs> Um, did you hear Pornhub is accepting Bitcoin now? I did. I I, I kind of laughed when somebody tweeted me that. It was like, like mainstream did... media news. Yeah. Wow. They, I guess they're linking it to the anonymous nature of Bitcoin, right? It's kind of like buying adult novelties. Like the last right. thing you want showing up is a brown box that's like 
super adult, realistic sex doll toy, right? You don't want that all over the outside of the box. <laughs> right, right. You just want some random generic name like Red Company, and then you open it up like, oh, it or, is right. Or you don't want the wife getting the credit card statement. They're like, honey, <laughs> what's this twenty nine ninety nine a month to Pornhub? Oh my, what was it? Uh, Elon Musk Company? The Boring Company? The Boring the Company? Boring. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, they already kind of do it to some degree uh, with a lot of the sites. They have that. What is it called? It's like e, epoch. Is that is that it? E- Come on, pervs, back me up here. Is it epoch? It's like one of those things where you can use like twenty different payment methods, and it completely goes through some other shell company. So you're never directly connected with whoever you're paying. Jake? That sounds really shady. I think it's called epoch, and it does it, well. They even accept Western Union as a method of payment. Like you know, it's shady when they accept Western Union. Zach nine nine one two zero 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 says Jay can do nude PC builds now. Who says I didn't do that anyway? <laughs> no, I'm positive he's done a nude PC build at least once in his look life. Look at my face right there. I look so unimpressed in the replay. Um, no, I still have Phil. Phil is still a full time fa- uh, camera guy. So I mean, I, I guess unless he wants to. Do yeah. organizational nope. stuff. Just oh. do it like a beige shirt, and then have them just do the pixelation filter. Mm. So it just looks like you're naked, kind of like The Sims. Oh, exactly. I, I would totally exactly. wear that if somebody made me like a t-shirt that just looks like Pixels. a pixelated torso, and you can see like where nips would be and the belly button and stuff. I would totally wear that on on camera. <laughs> that way, from a distance, I look like a a, a nude female <laughs> torso. <laughs> you need to do it. You need to do it. Make it happen. Oh, so I mean, okay, Nick. Mm-hmm. What have you learned working in this environment for the last year and well, year and two months? You like whipped cream on your macchiatos. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that too, right? <laughs> okay, what what happens when there's no whipped cream on the macchiato? Macchiato know, takes pop, flight. Pop <laughs> hey, hey, Nick, pop quiz. Right side up or upside down? Upside down. That's right. Yeah. That's right. He's been around the block, this guy. He knows. <laughs> <coughs> oh, man. Something else I wanted to address, too. Um, the video that went live this morning obviously wasn't a shot this morning uh, of, our, of our issue regarding the SSD being dead. It's looking more and more like the wrong SATA plug ended up in the wrong power supply box. I wonder how that happened. I have no idea how that happened. No clue. Who handles the equipment around here? Usually you when you're building stuff, but I usually just put it on the table for you, like, hey, grab this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm picking up to blame here, a little little bit of is that computer builder excuses? Like race car driver excuses? You got CPU builder excuses? Yeah, my tires are deflated, dude. <laughs> <laughs> deflate gate. Deflate gate. Uh, it's the wrong cable and it burned into it's the, the ground. wrong eight octane. They gave me eighty seven and asked for ninety one. Bro, computers are simple. Like, even Jay can build computers, so that's telling you something. Well, here's Everything- the problem. is oh. There's only so many plugs, right? I mean, right. obviously the SATA side of it is standardized, but when the side that plugs into the power supply, there's like three or four major power supply OEMs that these companies use. And there's only so many different pinouts that you can do. So the problem is a lot of these companies will reuse the same six-pin plugs or eight-pin plugs that plug into the, to the power supply, but the pinout itself is different. So the plug might be the same, but the pinout's different. So usually your indicator that you're putting the wrong plug in the wrong power supply would be it doesn't physically fit because it's keyed different. Right. But every now and then you find one that shared the exact same plug, but not the same pins. Interesting. So, so somehow you ended up with the wrong power cable in the wrong power supply box, and then it plugged in, it fit. Right. If it, 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 you didn't have to force it. You know, you know, he forced it, Nick. You know, he did. <laughs> it it clicked. Fit, <laughs> and, and then your SSD turned into poof magic smoke. We're still going to try and revive it. It's looking like it might be by, be salvageable. But okay. what we can't figure out is the power supply that it's looking like it came from is the gigabyte power supply I got like two years ago when I built my test bench. Yeah. Those cables have not been touched since then. And, Weird. and one of those SATA cables ended up inside of our RM850 power supply from Corsair ended up in that box, which we got long after that gigabyte showed up. Sabotage. Yeah, I think this was Nick's final like act of frustration for me was just like, to be like Eric and he's like, oh I'm gonna get him. Yeah, how can oh. I how can I get him? And that and that's I think that's I think it was on purpose. <laughs> oh my gosh. Nick on the surface, Nick's the kind of guy that will play <laughs> like he doesn't know what he's talking about and just play dumb. <laughs> but it's a brilliant act. Because then you just, like, you want to get really mad at him, but then you feel bad because yep. he doesn't get mad back at you. And then you just feel like an asshole. You're like, okay, I blew up my shit because of something you did, but now I feel bad. 
You know he's just absorbing <laughs> that and pushing it like deep down. He's gonna be a serial killer one day. I'm calling. Him. His, it's like guilt tripping me now too. Thanks. Hey, we're, see we're right there, Ryan. The Ryan Spreen in chat says someone didn't keep good inventory. It's true. No, actually, he kept good inventory. It was on the list. It's just he didn't keep good organization. Together. Yeah. I, I think blame should be placed on both of you because, Jay, you know you forced that son bitch in. Don't even lie. You know you did. You used greater pressure than what was necessary. Nick, like, does admit. it click right in or do you have to force it in? It clicks right in. God damn it, Nick. You always back him up. You could have at least thrown him under the bus just for shits and giggles on your way out. That's the only because he has about 36 <laughs> more hours of being on payroll. After that, he'll throw me under every bus that's coming my way. <laughs> so so did it get hit with 12-volt uh, rail or 5-volt rail when you plugged it in the wrong one? It, it, I don't know. It immediately trips the circuit protect and the power supply. The thing is, oh. now the drive doesn't detect when we plug it in. <clears throat> so well, How the hell do you think you're going to salvage it? Are you going to swap the, the board on it? No, really. a really common comment on that video that over and over and over again is that uh, you can actually get Windows to possibly, by power cycling it, consi- uh, like over and over with it power, like mm-hmm. in the OS... That you can sometimes get it to come back. So I'm gonna try it. I mean, what do I have to lose, right? Nothing. I mean, hell, I've se- I- I'm not even gonna like look at that and say that's not possible because I've recovered more than five hard drives by putting them in Ziploc bags and throwing them in the freezer. So what? this mystical, magical <laughs> shit actually works most of the time. Well, I mean, somebody somewhere at some point thought about throwing a wet cell phone in a bag of rice. <laughs> right. And that's it's <laughs> two iPhones. I've saved. That. Now I got Apple Care, so I don't have to deal with it no more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but all Apple's going to do now is give you, like, some third-time refurbed phone that's going to break on you in two months. Dude, Apple's getting bad, man. Yeah, the, the Genius Bar is all backed up. I think they don't have enough people for how many products they've sold. I don't like their X. I think the I've, problem is the amount of – or the lack thereof of Apple stores in your area because yeah. you can get a same-day appointment around here. Yeah, because all we have is the one – I have oh, one yeah. Apple store here, one in Seattle, but I don't want to go into Seattle for anything. Like, I don't care. Well, there's unless, one in unless, Bellevue, uh, right? There's, that's the one I'm talking yeah. about, the one at Bellevue. And then there's a Mac store that you can go to, but they have to actually mail it to Apple. So it like basically takes like two weeks you to know, get your anything. Your thumb freaks me out. I never noticed that it bends so far back. Oh, this guy right here? Yeah, it looks like you got pissed off at a stamp. Oh, yeah, dude. I can like make a tea with those suckers. Look at that. Whoa. Yeah. Palm, Double jointed. You look like Ladies. palm tree thumbs. <laughs> I, ca- I, call, I call it the G-spotter. The thing is, I've seen people be able to point their thumb back, like like push it back, but not just have it go back on its own. I mean... I know the fact that I actually have a muscle that can do that. Like, and the funny thing is, I can't even bend it that far forward. I can actually bend it almost further backwards than I can forward. It looks like a loose control arm. And my <laughs> knees are fucking inverted too. Like, if you ever see me with my legs stand together, my knees bow out, not in, not in. They bow out. It's really weird. Whoever put me yeah, together, fuck. you do look like you live life on the on, on a horse. <laughs> you got one of them cowboy walks. Like, if you hold your belt buckle, if you theoretically wore pants. Yeah, like, 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 <laughs> it's one of those awkward <laughs> suspension setups that you don't know what to do. Oh my god, yeah. Jerry's got positive leg camber. Yeah, <laughs> I actually do. I actually do. <laughs> uh, I'm like a rhinoceros, though. I can run really fast for a short distance in a straight line, but there is no cornering in you me. You were like I the original I, the, Tesla zero to sixty. Exactly. Exactly. But, like if they made shoes with stickier rubber, I might have a chance at cornering, but I'd probably just snap my knees before they found a way to actually keep the power going past 60. <laughs> actually, there was a guy at my gym who has to have surgery on his ankle because he popped his ACL um, by running. He was he the moment he took off from the sprint was just and now he's he got so, so much force. He launched himself with. He yeah. snapped his ACL. That's Crazy. Nice. Yeah, that's a, that's like a six month recovery, isn't it? I bit. have no idea. I, I know he's having surgery. I don't know anything about the recovery. It's it, I know. Well, you have to, right? Your ACL won't if you snap it. They have to go in there and like reattach it and put shit on it, right? Yeah. And then it's like, um, it's just gonna line up and like somehow heal magically. Well, that's the thing. When it tears, it it retracts, mm-hmm. right? So it doesn't actually go back. So right. If it doesn't start healing on its own, they have to do it. God, I can't imagine what that must have felt like. Although, you know, I snapped a tendon in the back of my leg. I, I don't think it, it wasn't the ACL, but I snapped a tendon in the back of my. Uh, right between my foot and my knee and from some medication they put me on that made it weak. Oh. And they're like, yeah, go to the, don't go to the gym or do any extraneous <laughs> activity while you're on this medicine. All I did was stand up out of bed and that was enough to snap that motherfucker. Jeez. Like, <laughs> the worst, the worst injury I've ever had, uh, was when I was really big. I was, I was close to 500 pounds at that time when I, I, I went to pick up some of this, like, <clears throat> you know, the best pizza you could possibly get. It's like mom pop type places, right? Not, Papa yep. John's or Domino's, like these these one-off places, and that's all that that family does is made pizza for sixty years, right? 
Yep. So I, <clears throat> we ordered it. I went in. I picked it up. And walking out of the restaurant or the pizza parlor, I stepped off the curb and rolled my ankle. And the thing Ooh. is, it was like one of those big curbs, too. It was like eight or ten inches tall, like a big fat one. And I, my ankle rolled under my, under my leg so bad that it tore every tendon and ligament on my left ankle to the point to where they actually thought I had completely, like, not dislocated, but, like, broke off my foot because this shit was just dangling. And the bruises and the, and the black and the purple went all the way up to my thigh, not my, like, past my knee and all the way up to my thigh with the way it bled. But you know Were you what? Were like in shock? I'm sorry? Were you in shock from that? Like, how do you even tolerate that much pain? Because I snapped this one little thing in the back of my leg, and I was laying on the ground screaming bloody murder. Okay, so first of all, you've seen firsthand I have an extremely high pain threshold. You do. Second of I all, can... it didn't feel like pain initially. It felt like heat. I felt the pop. I heard the, I heard the crunching. It sounded like breaking chicken bones, right? But then I felt the heat just like riding up my leg. And I was wearing long pants, right? Mm -hmm. And I tried to stand up. And that's when my foot immediately, like when I stood up, like I lifted my, the weight off of my leg, the foot just curled up. Like it just curled like, like, a, like a club foot. Like have you seen babies with club feet? Yeah. So it looked like that. And I was like, oh, what the hell? Moral, the moral of this story, though, is I never dropped the pizza. I held it up over my head as I was falling. I never <laughs> dropped it. It stayed perfectly intact in the box. Oh, oh, no yeah. joke. Guy walking by was like, and he saved the pizza. As I'm sitting there with a foot that can like go bas basically in a 360 <laughs> dangling by skin. <laughs> Did he give you the fat man nod? Was he just like, mm-hmm. You were like, mm-hmm. I basically <laughs> just tried to stand up and I was like, oh, something doesn't feel right. And I sat down on the curb and that's when I looked down at my foot and I was basically looking at the bottom of my foot with my leg going straight. So, oh, like Yeah. That's what, that happened. Was, That's what happens when a nearly 500-pound man steps off a curb and rolls his ankle. That was just gravity. So. Oh, gee. <laughs> I can't even imagine what that'd be like. Because right now, I'm, I'm a little over 300, and I'm, I do not like it. Like, I, pff, yeah. I, I would kill to be back at 250 again. That was, like my, that was my sweet spot for my nubbly little body. But, God, 500 pounds, Jesus. Ugh. Yeah. It's nuts. I see and how, I'm sorry. Well, you probably, do, you make, do you make your weight public, or you keep that a closely guarded secret? No, I, at right now I weigh 270 pounds. I have put back on about 35 pounds from all the weight I lost in 2015. Yeah. According to our body scan, about 15 of it's muscle, the rest of it's fat. That's because I've been more sedentary. And the other problem was when I started lifting heavy, I underestimated the appetite that comes with that. And oh, so yeah. I just haven't made good eating choices. But no, my weight is completely public. It's, it's something I'm going to struggle with probably the rest of my life. And I'm going to go up and down 20, 25 pounds constantly, I think, the rest of my life. Like right now... Uh, my wife and I are in a, a pretty, I'm, I'm basically plateaued. I've stopped the weight gain for a while now. I haven't lost anything cause I haven't committed to it, which is terrible. But, but my wife has been dropping weight like crazy cause she's in that weight loss mode right now. I saw the picture the other day yeah. that she posted over on her profile. I was like, Whoa, yeah. man, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. She's lost a crap ton of weight. She's down like two or three sizes. And the biggest thing was once our, once our youngest daughter stopped breastfeeding, that was the biggest thing for her because it, it, she had the kind of, I don't know, metabolism or whatever that refused to let her lose weight while she was feeding too. You know what I mean? Well, I think that's like pretty common, isn't it? Because your body knows it has to generate more calories for something else that so holds on to everything it can. Well, the thing is, it depends. Like our, how'd this turn into pregnancy talk? So when we had our first baby, you know, <laughs> I had to shave the nipple hair because the kid kept coughing up hairballs. Anyway. Oh my God. So. Common problem, guys. It's a common no. problem. Oh. With our with with our oldest, um, she kind of dropped weight quickly because she was, I guess the amount of the amount of energy it took just to make food was helping her yeah. burn weight. But every kid's different, and so this time she could not lose weight. But as soon as as soon as uh, she got off the nipple, man, did did the weight just start falling off her? And and, and then like anything else, I'm sitting there looking at this, going, "Wow, she's uh, she's impressing me with what she's doing," which makes me more made, motivated to kind of get back in that mindset. But what I've noticed, I've been with my wife almost 19 years, and we've never been in the same mode at the same time. I, either I'm losing weight like crazy and she doesn't care, yeah, or she's losing weight like crazy and I don't care. Someday we'll both lose weight at the same time. Now, me and my wife kind of do the same thing, too. I'm going to say that that's almost kind of a typical thing, especially when you're both starting heavy. Yeah. And it's just maintenance because, like, well, one of you is working out and doing everything. The other one's pretty much just keeping up the... Because we both did it at the same time, like moods and stuff would clash. We've done that before, too, where it's like if you're always worn out all the time, you get a little little pissy. Yeah. And, well, you're pissy all the time. But anyways, most yeah. people get pissy <laughs> after they get tired and work out. But it's like we, we don't want your wife tired also. 
because it's one of those things. It's like you don't want to both be tired at the same time because that's a recipe for disaster. <laughs> yeah. No, but you know what, though? I mean, we haven't been eating out a ton because, obviously, she, she likes to do her own clean cooking and stuff, especially in this particular mode that she's in. Um, but if you've got one spouse that's, like, hell-bent on just eating right and eating clean and exercising a lot, then you'd have to try kind of hard not to get some residual effects from that. You know what I mean? Especially, Especially if, if it's that buys all the food for the house. That's, I don't go shopping. Are you kidding me? That's, that's my problem right now. I, I told my wife, I was like, the only reason I'm fat like this is because you somehow put enough calories in the house for me to find them. Like if you if you didn't shop, I'm more lazy than I am hungry. Like if I get up and I'm hungry and there's no food in the house, I'm not going to go shopping. I'm going to just go back to bed. Like I'm not I'm, I'm not going to go searching for food that isn't readily accessible. I rarely do this, but I'm actually going to ask the chat for some advice here. I never do that because I'm never going to get anything that is consistent. But here's my problem. My appetite is nonstop. And I'm not eating nonstop, but I'm hungry nonstop. And that leads you to make some bad choices. And when I was losing weight, like I lost 72 pounds in four and a half months in 2015. I had people messaging me, asking me if I was sick. Mm. Like viewers were messaging me going, are you okay? Because you're, I watched a video from a month ago and you look like you got cancer. Like people started getting legitimately concerned. Even yeah. even Luke at Linus Tech Tips told me that he was worried about my health because of how fast I was losing it. The difference was I wasn't hungry. I was cycling 25 to 50 miles a day. And then I was eating right. I was only eating about 2,200 calories a day, burning 6,000 calories a day on that bike. So that's what that was. But and when you're burning more than you're taking in too, that can kind of I was screw burning you three times what I was taking in. Yeah. So I was burning on, on average about four pounds a week at the rate I was losing weight. And so Jeez. my problem is since I started lifting heavy now, I'm hungry all the damn time. And I don't know how to curb it healthily, healthily. I kind of felt the same way back when I was weightlifting now that I think about it too. Because we used to go weightlifting. We'd always go out to an all-you-can-eat dinner afterwards. And the next day we'd go to an all-you-can-eat lunch. And then we'd freaking go hit the gym again. Okay, I see a lot of people saying water. Here's what you guys have to understand. There's a big piece of information here. In 2009, I had gastric bypass surgery. So the amount of water I can intake and the amount I can drink at once is not like normal. I can't fill up my stomach with water like you guys can because there's no stomach for it to sit in. The other thing is I see a lot of people mentioning no carbs, no carbs, no carbs. I understand that. I understand exactly what carbs do and I understand they turn into sugar. What is the problem is, is I'm craving carbs like crazy. So I need some way to curb the craving of carbs. When I'm hungry, like right now we just eat beef jerky, right? Mm -hmm. It's beef and it's protein. But the thing is when you're, when you, when your body is just like craving sugar, it's like, you want bread, you want potatoes, you want that kind of stuff. That's like me all the time. I do have a suggestion that might help you because I've been playing around with stuff for the last couple of weeks, especially with like medication change and hormone therapy and stuff. Mm -hmm. The thing that seems to curb my appetite the most is stimulants. Like just bar none, just kills my appetite dead. Like if I take 100 milligrams of caffeine like every hour, like take, you know, I do those little freaking caffeine pills, 100 milligrams, basically a cup of coffee. If I take one of those every hour, I literally will just forget to eat. It'll be like 10 o'clock at night and I'll be like, oh, crap, I didn't eat yet today. Yeah, but I have to for me personally, I would have to assume that taking that much caffeine is going to have negative effects for me. Well, you already drink quite a bit, though. How many coffees do you have a day? Guaranteed one, sometimes two. So, t OK, well, one coffee probably isn't going to cover your appetite. espresso, though. Time. Oh, espresso is fine. Anything that's got a good jolt of caffeine in it is all you need. I see a lot of people suggesting, like, stop lifting. That's a stupid suggestion. <laughs> well, like your body is, is look, you're hungry for a reason, dude, okay. because your body needs the energy or thinks it needs the energy. Here's the science behind it. As far at least as far as my trainer, who's NASM and ASM or whatever, sort of, he's a he's a master trainer, NASM certified, former professional bodybuilder, Mr. California, went to Mr. Olympia. Like the guy knows at least genetics, right? Yep. You start lifting heavy. Your muscles need to repair. Your muscles repair off the fat. Your body craves food to make fat to repair the muscle. So it's like a never ending cycle. The thing is, sugar turns directly into fat. Carbs turn into sugar. Sugar turns into fat. So that's why you crave the carbs. I can eat an entire freaking chicken. Like, I'll go to, I can go to like Sprouts or Whole Foods or whatever and buy a pre made baked chicken, right? Eat Delicious. the whole damn thing and still be hungry. Yeah. So that's what I'm fighting with right now. Bubble gum. Oh, I find that too. Protein, protein, like like vegetables, like fiber and protein. He's like, oh, just eat eat a lot of protein and you won't be hungry. Oh, screw that, man. Protein. I never feel full when I eat protein. Yeah. You know, it's but again, yeah, the carbs. It's it's a delicate balance. But anybody says don't eat carbs. That's the thing that kind of bugs me. I know a lot of people that do the keto diet and it works really well for them and everything. But it's like your body runs on sugar. I'm not saying you need a lot of sugar, but I'm just saying to completely cut out carbs and sugar entirely seems really unnatural. Yeah. 
So I'm, I'm still having carbs and sugar, but I try to avoid sh- unnecessary sugar. Like I don't drink sugary beverages anymore. If I do drink a soda, occasionally it'll be a diet. If I drink a Red Bull, it's a diet. You know, aspartame ain't the greatest thing in the world for you, but it's still better than me getting, you know, a ton more grams of sugar that I don't need. Someone said um, swim or cycle. I don't have access to a pool and cycling obviously is how I lost so much weight the first time. And now that the weather has turned... It's not like it was ever cold in California, but I'm sorry. When it's 55 <laughs> degrees and I don't have cold weather riding gear or fleece lined gear, um, when I'm moving, you know, anywhere between 18 to 25 miles per hour on a bike, that's a bit of a wind chill, okay? Yeah, I understand some of you guys in the East Coast are still dealing with snow and stuff, but I'm sorry, but 60 in California, we might as well be just dying. True. Um, but the hours are longer now, so, and the daylight's longer, so I'm, I, I'm planning yeah. on getting back on that bike more often. But man, Plus, I'm telling you, it's. It doesn't have water. California like doesn't have water, we, so you can't. We got water. Out. No, you don't. It's yeah. a lie. It's, it's no, here. I, it's, it's fake news. You've been bro. to the Pacific Northwest, Nick. You know we don't have water compared to like oh, what he's compared to about. them. Yeah, you guys are like water world. <laughs> Dude, I, I got this fucking challenge back in the day, and I got shit on so many times from people from California saying I was insensitive. I'm like, if you guys were standing where I am right now, there is literally a water source within ten feet in every single direction you walk anywhere. So <laughs> like. Let's talk about that for a second. I'm, this yeah. And this episode's obviously all over the place more than normal. Just If you guys are just joining us, we're hanging out with Nick because this is Nick's last week. He's going to be pursuing some other opportunities that he can actually use his education and degrees in, uh, more so than being Jay's yelp, shop bitch, yelp, basically. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, don't, you don't have that $100,000 education to be my shop bitch. So. Hey, J- Jay, you know what the one thing you did give to, to Nick, though, that he's going to take Chlamydia? with him in <laughs> No, it's it's definitely the get that in the butt. Okay, (laughs) something's losing out of there. I don't know. Oh my god, you you literally hardened Nick against anything. I don't know about that. You you I I don't think anybody like he went and got a job in the mob and they just started screaming at him and shooting guns around him. I think his pulse wouldn't even go up at this point. Like I said, Nick has a Nick has a. I'm telling you, Nick's niceness, his persona is all. (laughs) Just that, a persona. Because Nick has done something no one else has really been able to do. Yes, I'm a hard ass. I'm a, I try and be fair. I'm wrong sometimes, and I try and hide it. Uh-huh. Oh, you try to hide it? But, <laughs> oh, but, yeah, now you admit it. <laughs> <laughs> but you've been the, you're the only person I know who I can like get mad at legitimately. You do something that is, deserves like ramification or something, mm-hmm. and then I feel bad for it. <laughs> It's like, <laughs> wait a minute. I teach, How did this happen? I should teach that to Phil. <laughs> no, Phil. Phil's good. Phil. Phil's. Phil. How can you be mad at Phil? He's just the happiest little guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Phil's dope. Phil I'm, gonna dope. I'm gonna miss Phil. If you guys are wondering where Phil is, actually, uh, he wasn't here this week because he's in Japan. He sent me all the pictures. He got overnight parts from Japan. I'm so jelly. <laughs> <laughs> Phil has Phil actually does uh, a lot of stuff for automotive and Formula D because he's also a freelance uh, videographer. And uh, he's a professional videographer in the car world, and he's actually over in Japan doing stuff right now. So, Jules. Do you tell him he's gay all the time for doing drifting? Because drifting's gay. Do you, do you, you tell him what? that? Hey, hey, can you take that back, please? How much camber, how much camber does he have on his car? Uh, it depends when he's him. aired out or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, if it's greater than two and a half degrees, that, that guy needs to just knock, knock it off. I don't think just it's knock. like extreme camber. It just, no. It just airs out. Not. He has a Mark III. Volkswagen. Oh yeah, yeah. It's got over three hundred thousand miles on it, and it, on the engine, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really? It's yeah. VR6. It, well, it's a VR6 swap. Okay, okay. God, that's crazy. And he's uh, what? What kind of power does that thing put down? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Well, I mean, it's a drift car. You'd assume that it needs it's, some kind of power. It's a no, golf. it's a Golf. It's front wheel drive, dude. Wait. Okay. Now, 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 I'm he confused. He's got a. He's got a. Like, okay, hold on, hold on. Okay. He is a. Um, he's a professional videographer for Bulls Media. That okay. does that covers events like Formula D and, and all sorts of stuff like all over the country and in Japan. So because so he's he's, he's a himself. no he's a videographer for it. Ah, okay, thank you. That's where I was confused. I thought I thought that he was doing Formula Drift, and I was like front wheel drive car. What this does not add. Yeah, he up. goes backwards. <laughs> yeah, dude, backwards. Throw it in, <laughs> throw it in reverse. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's got no. But his car is a is a Mark III um, Golf with a VR6 swap and has over three hundred thousand miles in airbags. <laughs> so. Jeez. It's, it's not that it's fast, nice. though. Like, he couldn't keep up with the Camaro. He couldn't keep up with me. Is the VR6 engine pretty <laughs> heavy, too? Like, does that make that car really stupid front heavy? A little bit, but it's also, it makes up for it in torque. Okay. But because it's not turbo, you really don't 
tell what the torque is. <laughs> okay. Because I had a buddy put a Prelude engine in. Uh, it was the two liter Prelude engine, an old Honda Civic, and that thing literally didn't go around corners anymore. It just understeered everywhere. It was terrible. Oh, cool. It was bad. <laughs> Speaking of cars, how, how's the Subi running? The Subi is uh, might be time to put out the pasture. Actually, uh, uh, did, did something go the, knock knock? Who's there? Yeah, the fifth. The, well, the the engine's actually holding together pretty well. It's the transmission that's going, and that's a lot more money than the engine. Like I was hoping the transmission would last forever, but unfortunately, the fifth gear synchro is gone now. Like I literally, it takes a second and a half for me to shift into fifth if I don't want to grind the transmission. And fifth is a gear I use a lot in that car. Only because you're doing so. your high speed long drives and your heart, your long pulls. Why don't you just not go to fifth gear and not go so fast? I, by the way, speaking of that, I broke my last record. I got it on my Cobb access port to say 171 miles an hour <laughs> in a Subaru. I don't know how the hell you do it with that aerodynamics, those lack of aerodynamics. Dude, it literally feels like you're on a boat in open water. <laughs> like, like it doesn't feel like anything's connected to the road. I'm almost, <laughs> I'm almost certain that I'm just flying like six inches off the surface of the pavement because there's, there's no connection. The wheel feels completely dead. It's that rally mode, dude. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've got I've got a place where I can do it where it's about a three to four mile straight stretch. Nothing but just run out on both sides, five lanes wide and nobody's there at night. So I'm like, wee. But uh, it did it. I was I was pretty proud of her. But now the transmission's being a whore. So I'm like, damn it. I wonder why. So I, don't, I don't know what I'm going to get. I don't know what I'm going to get. Next. Well, no, no. I think the sync, the synchro is not going to suffer from a hard a hard pass. The synchro is suffering because I'm shifting. I've seen the you way know. you drive. You got a little heavy foot. You got a heavy foot. <laughs> <laughs> you got you got, you, got a, you can't granny clutch it, man. You can't granny clutch it. No, it's just it's it's just time. I mean, I, I'm really hard on that car. But the transmission rebuild for it is about uh, about three grand just to just to basically get it back to you know stock fresh mm -hmm. with internals. If I want to build it out and actually have it be like a built transmission, God, sky's the limit. Like five thousand dollars up to fifteen thousand dollars. I was like, eh. Oh, no, no. Wait, mm. so you could go with like rally spec then? You can actually. Hey. Why don't you just dog box it? Yeah. <laughs> want to, oh, dude, dude, Cosworth sells a kit. It's the engine, transmit. It's the engine and transmission, the half shafts that come out that go to the wheels, uh, new control arms and everything for the car, and the whole kit's forty five thousand dollars. And it gets the car up to all, just shy of 500 horsepower at the wheel. And uh, it's new turbo and everything on the engine. Uh, and I think they stroke it out to 2.9 liters instead of 2.5. But it's got the dog box in it. Mm, so, so it's a six-speed dog box. So I can just and slam it. it probably that. costs as much as your car. Pretty much. Oh, no. $45,000 no. is like more than a brand new Subaru. It's just for I'd do it. I'd do it, too. <laughs> It'd be fun. I mean, there's well, you, you've driven in my car. It's a fun car. Like you even said yourself that you'd consider getting a Subaru just to have something to horse around with, like in the dirt and stuff. Like it's yeah. it's a great. <clears throat> I, but I, I don't I wouldn't want a newer. OK, when I say newer, I mean like blah, by and newer. I, I like one of the older Subarus, yeah. like in the 90s or something, because then because then I need to find a guy like you who's about to just offload his car because he doesn't want to fix the transmission. <laughs> drop that engine in there. You know, there's plenty of guys. There's plenty of, oh, of scenarios like that out there. I've considered the, the Remember when I sold my GSX because I thought I blew up the transmission again? Turned out to be just a yeah. busted axle. But I was so I was just so fed up with the car by then. I sold it for a thousand dollars. Yeah, I I love the car. If if I had the money right now to like fix it up properly and everything, I would. And the fact is, I don't have any money to go buy another car right now anyway. So I'm thinking about just hanging on to it for a while. And if things turn around, then maybe I'll sink the money. I'm never going to do the Cosworth build, though, because I'm not going to put $45,000 into my 2004 or 2005 Subaru. That just doesn't make any sense to me on any planet. But I, but I probably would take the engine and get it bored out. To bore out the engine's about two grand. Bored out to, I think it's 2.8 or 2.9 liters. They put sleeves in it. Do the forged internals and everything on it. It's about another 1500 bucks. And then build the transmission for probably like $8,000. And then you'd have something that wouldn't be quite as good as the Cosworth. But still would be reliable and putting down good power. So speaking of That's cars, because I got the ZL1, I've seen a lot of comments, people asking like, where's the Z? What are you doing with the Z? And I keep forgetting, like, my Facebook is private. And I pretty much only post in our racing groups. Yeah. So the internet hasn't really been privy to what I've been doing to the Z. <laughs> so the Z is slowly but surely converting to a full race car. I mean, the interior is already coming out. The roll, bar, or the, the roll cage has already gone in. And he's fighting it Was along the way. Built? Or bought was that is that a built cage for that, or did you it was buy built one for it? I mean, I bought Dude, it. I bought it, but it was built for the car. I mean, it was a it was fabbed in another state and then it was freighted to me. That's awesome, dude! It looks good. It looks really good. But the problem is, 
<laughs> Why are you already giggling? Because you know where this is going? Yeah. The problem is that car with a cage was not built for a two hundred or six foot four, two hundred and seventy pound individual. So the cage, of course, pushes the seat forward a little bit, which even when you saw the way I fit in that car with the seat all the way back and reclined as far as it could yep. go, my knees still touched the dash, my head still touched the roof. So imagine the seat being two clicks forward now and not being able to recline. You are a tall human. <laughs> you are a tall creature. So <laughs> you have to put padding on the bars so they don't eat through your legs. Well, no, there's no door bars. It's a four point right now. So, oh, okay. I so for I the rest of this season, I'm gonna probably run it like this, and then when we go on when we go on winter break and stuff, I'm probably gonna then take it over to one of our local uh, fabricators, and I'm probably gonna get the floor pan lowered to get the, uh, the the car or the seat sitting lower with a full like six point roll cage, you know, the whole deal. Probably even like Lexan Lexan glass. But the thing Ooh. is, like right now, so I've got my Sparco seat, which the only way it's gonna fit in there is if it's sitting on the floor. So I'm actually dropping the car off on April 30th to the fabricators to get the new seat brackets and seat, the low mount seat m mounted for it. My yeah. six point harness and my helmet and Hans were ordered today. So I'm going to go race it uh, next month on the 12th, actually. And you're not going to be able to go to that event, although I know you want to go, Jerry, because the next day is Mother's Day. So I know you're not going to be here for that. But um, yeah, so it is slowly but surely going to turn into a race car. So as soon as I make it through the rest of this season, we go on summer break, I'm going to start pulling out all of the internals, or excuse me, all of the interior. I'm going to eventually do the AC delete. I'm going to do all the smog equipment delete. It already has no cats or smog equipment on it anyway. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean, a lot of people have been asking and that's what that's what's going on with the car. But I've got to figure out something though. I drove it to work the other day and driving home, I started getting a really weird funky sound on the left uh, front. Oh, yeah. That and was... either my two-piece rotor's coming apart or my caliper's coming off. i got to figure out. <laughs> Figure out. Does it sound like a chatter? It's a. It, it sounds like. No, it's like a. <laughs> it's definitely like a, a a metal creaking under deceleration. Have you checked your your how tight your lug nuts are? That's the first thing I checked. Okay, because I was gonna say that's what happened to my Subaru. I think I was telling you about that where I was like driving down the road and it it was creaking and creaking and creaking. Are you and then it at the floor? Because your thumb Me? keeps bending too far. For where you're <laughs> oh trying to my swing. gosh, dude. <laughs> Roasted from another state. <laughs> hold, on, hold, on, hold on, let me let me show you. Okay, let's goes like that, and then like. <laughs> there we go. You pointing at the guy behind you to tell him that? I mean, so anyway, no. <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, yeah. I mean, something's just come loose in the front end, and I got to figure it out. But I'm glad I, I drove it now because I have a month to figure it out. So that's better than me putting the the hubcentric thing, thinking I needed it, and driving oh, God, for like a month. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, the hub-centric rings? I hate those no, things. No, no. So, Nick, so Nick took the hub-centric. You tell the story. So I bought new wheels, but I pulled out the hub-centric rings from my, rings from my old spacers because I thought yeah. I need to use hub-centric rings still on the new wheels. <laughs> <laughs> so you literally just had pancaked plastic between It was metal. It was metal. But the problem is he couldn't get the wheel He so, couldn't get the wheel to mount flat against the hub. <laughs> so there was, there was always this, rattle, this rumble in the back. I couldn't tell what it was. And then we showed up for a track day at ACS, and I thought... Oh, I might do a session, but I go back and check out my car. I'm missing a lug. I'm like, that's that something's not right. And so I drive it around a little more, and it's just all wobbling all over. So I had basically given Nick my spacers for my old stock set of Nismo wheels for the 370Z. And he, when he got his aftermarket wheels, he didn't realize it goes from a hub-centric wheel. Because remember, OEM lugs, at least for the Nissan, they're not acorn-shaped. They're not cone. They are a flat nut that pushes against a flat wheel hub a wheel uh, the hole where the lug goes yeah and it it requires a hub centric ring to center the wheel on the hub aftermarket wheels have tapered lugs and tapered lug holes which are lug centric which means it centers on the lugs my bad nick left the spacer hub centric ring which is about twice the thickness of it like anything oem would fit which kept the wheel from about a quarter inch from meeting the hub so the whole time he was driving around with wheels that he just tightened down in whatever order. So of course he tightens down the first wheel, which kind of yanks the wheel off center and then just works his way around. So the wheels were never flat against the hub. So as he's going down the road, shit looked like one of those wobbly big rig container trailers. <laughs> I'm really surprised he didn't bust the, the, yeah. the actual studs. Yeah, no same. kidding. Yeah. Because he put all the stress on those lugs after that, yeah, which is why he lost lug nuts. Because as the thing was wobbling around and going like vibrated tight, off. it was going tight and then not tight, tight, not tight. The lug worked its way off. So, yeah. I fixed it. 
Yeah, Nick sent me pictures, and I'm like, what is that doing there? He's all, that's the hub-centric ring. I'm like, but why? He's like, because they're hub-centric. I'm like, no, (laughs) those wheels are not hub-centric. You can run hub-centric rings, but not ones from a spacer. (laughs) Yeah, usually there's an indentation on the back of the aftermarket wheel that it recesses into, but you're saying it was too thick? Well, yeah, because it was like a 20-mil spacer. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, because I had to run spacers on, uh, on my Corolla back when I had it. For the aftermarket wheels that are on there. And I remember I left a spacer off once because it just fell off the wheel while I had it off. And I put it back on the car and the car was all like burr, 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 down the road. I was like, oh, shit, this ain't right. Yeah, it's nuts. So that's cool. So Nizzy's going to be a race car now because that's, uh, that's a long term start- goal. So, so you're not talented enough to drive the, the real car fast around the track. You got to do the slow one. Huh? Oh, OK. Oh, don't <laughs> okay. start. <laughs> Yeah. Don't, don't go hey, down. by the way, I have to put my racing sim. I've only got I've only got three days left. I promised my kid for his birthday. So when I get that put together, you want to get a, get an iRacing racing event on the calendar so you can embarrass me in front of everybody. I guess so. I don't see why I, not. Haven't, I haven't played racing in two years. I've kept my count. Guys. Can... Just, I just want to see it. You don't have iRacing racing, though, do you? I can buy it. <laughs> oh, you, but that's a subscription, dude. It's like the most expensive sim there is. It is. Dude. And I've been paying for it for two years and I haven't even yeah. logged in just because I wanted to keep it active. Hey, Nick, do you have a do you have a wheel or anything? Yeah. He's got my old I G. Have his old G twenty seven. Twenty seven, yeah. Oh, that that's a sweet wheel. I mean, as far as wheels go, that's actually a really, really good wheel still. I want to get uh, new pedals for my racing sim though, because I want to go with the true uh, hydraulic style, like you've got. Yeah, <clears throat> it's just will. Yeah, yeah, finding them is not easy though. Um, I want to get the Hamburg that you have. Make them anymore though. They they for some reason all the companies that were because there's like twenty companies that were making they were these so really expensive. expensive. They were like fifteen hundred bucks. Well, these ones were the sim pedals were because they're literally straight out of a car. They use the yeah. brake, they use the master cylinder and the slave cylinder from a real car, a real race car. So, uh, yeah. but I, I wonder if you could just build some out of like some sixty forty aluminum or something like that. Just just take a pedal set out of like a, an existing car. Yeah, and just mount because that's all they did with the sim pedals. If you look, the they just put an adapter on it so that the pressure sensor that's on the master cylinder is basically just reading pressure to an Arduino board. And then that just pretends it's a it's a USB controller, and so you got what? Grr. <laughs> <laughs> he, told, he told me to do that. Right? Grr, what? really fast. <laughs> Grr. Grr. Where'd that oh. come from? Oh, I see what he's doing. What? Don't say it, because he tries what? to make you say, uh, uh, but when you, and then it says something else. Oh no, no, we don't. That's bad. Yeah, don't say that. Nothing wrong oh. with a G twenty seven. Um. Anyway. Yes, Jerry, I drive the ZL1 on track like it's meant to be driven. He sends it really good. Uh, no, I, In less than 3,000 miles, I've already gone full, through a full set of brakes and a whole set of tires. <laughs> no, no, when I, when, I, when I come down there, I, I definitely want to go for a ride in it, hopefully on a track somewhere. Look, I, took, I took one of the guys in our racing group who's known to be like one of the most ballsy, he's going to send it and probably die guys in our group. Yep. I took him on a ride along and scared the shit out of him. So, yeah. At one point, I was like, I'm going to do a cool down lap. And he's like, yeah, yeah, you, you should totally slow down. <laughs> so, I mean, it's got- hey, I've always said you're faster on pavement. Like, I've, I've ridden with you. You've still never sketch- seen me on a track. And the canyons aren't a, aren't a no. the canyons are not even a percentage of uh, my ability. Because I don't want to wrap it around a tree or fly a thousand feet off a cliff. Oh, no, fair, fair enough. But I mean, e- even so, though, driving within the limits of the road, you were you were pretty close to the limits of the road. <laughs> like you you were staying just shy of it. But I, I was definitely getting the clinch factor. And I'm usually pretty relaxed. Like I even go for rides, you know, hot laps with the with the rally guys through the woods, you know, where those guys will hit 80, 90 miles an hour going through the woods where you and I, you know, and the BRZs were cruising along at like 45. But uh yeah, but yeah, you're fa- you're fast on the pavement. I would love to see what it's like on a track with you. I made my <clears throat> I made my instructor clinch. Uh, <laughs> he 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 squished his butt cheeks together because uh, at Button Willow going 13 CW, which is a 13 turn clockwise uh, orientation of that track. There's like a ton of different configurations of Button Willow, but we yeah. were running 13 CW. So if anyone here knows that track, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, my car. So there's towards the last se- uh, sector of the track, sector three. You come out of a late turn apex into like three S's. So it's a, it's a right-hander, a left-hander, right-hander, and then a left-hander again into a long straight into a 90-degree turn. Coming out of the S's, I was already doing about 108 miles per hour with the wheel turned over to the left. I curbed it a little bit too much on the left side, which kicked the car up, which made the back end start to oversteer towards a wall. And you, but, but the thing is with my PDR, my performance data recorder in the car, 
you see it 108, and you know the wheels came off the ground because it's like the miles per hour, are like 103, 104, 105, 108, 120. It's like, whoa, because the wheels just spun suddenly, right? Yeah. You see a 30 degree counter steer because you can see the steering wheel and everything and the steering angle and throttle and all that. You see that I never lifted the throttle. I stayed in at 100%. A 30 degree counter steer at 108 miles per hour pointing at a wall just to straighten the car back out and never lift it. My instructor was like, from the passenger seat, that was scary as shit because, of course, at that point, he's just along for the ride, right? Right. But the, the car, probably to a fault, doesn't scare me enough on track. So I really do just let all 700 horsepower work their way around the track. It's fun, though. <laughs> It's a lot of fun. That's why I'm buying tires left and right. <laughs> oh, it's, it, it, it's a good thing you're on a relatively small track. Because, like, if you took that thing out to, like, the Nürburgring and oh, you yeah. drove like you do your simulator, yeah. I'm pretty sure you'd die on the first lap. I can make it clean through the Nürburgring, though, on my simulator. I'd probably lose a quarter panel. <laughs> Jay, you have never once, when I've bared witness, I don't know if it's just me being in the room that somehow screws it up for you, but... Remember last time I was over, we had to fix your wheel, and you did what was it? Four tries on the Nurburgring and Project Cars with the Cadillac CTSV. Oh, it was ATSVR. Yeah, it was ATSVR. You just kept eating shit like about halfway through the lap or three quarters of the way through the lap, and just oh man, you. But I've spent, but I've spent so much time on that track since then. I do it in the rain now. It's scary. Yeah. It's scary. Yeah. I've heard that track's a different animal in person, though. I was watching a documentary yeah. where some guy was like, it doesn't matter well, how many times you've done this in a racing simulator, dude. When you get out there, the surface is just it's weird. It's different every time. And in a simulator, yeah. it's consistent. But in real life, there's like oil all over that track. <laughs> Cap El Patel said 700 horsepower? What? Yeah, Jay's, Jay's uh, American built sports car has <laughs> 700 horsepower. <laughs> and 700 torque. <laughs> I know that that doesn't make any sense in any universe because American cars usually just have big motors that don't make a lot of power. It makes 650 this- torque at 3,100 RPM. It's monster. <laughs> so it's monster I've got a video of me of me at 5,500 feet doing an f- entire first gear burnout downhill. <laughs> <laughs> so already you've got altitude and going downhill. It's not easy to do a burnout. And yeah, but I'm not putting that video online because my license plate is completely visible. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to go for a ride in it because like, like I said, I'm not a big, I, I don't like a lot of American cars. I'd say probably the Corvette yeah. would be scary. So, and you're about as close to a Corvette as you can get. I mean, the two cars pretty much punch in, in the same, in the same way, the way you're figured. The versus Z01 like, one LE is faster than the Z06 uh, on track. It's not faster in a straight line. It's a couple tenths slower in a straight line, but it's, it's a more track focused car than the Z06. The only thing faster now is the Corvette ZR1, which is twice the price. Yeah, I was gonna say that's a completely different price point, right? The it's ZR1. not even comparable. Now you're up in you're up in like cheap Lamborghini and McLaren range now with the ZR1. Oh. You know, yeah. I mean, you well, remember? Course. Yeah, I remember. My car weighs thirty eight hundred and like thirty pounds. It's got it's a stage one, so it's already got seven hundred horsepower, but it, it's heavy, and it's only seventy two thousand dollars. All things considering, though, thirty eight hundred pounds for a, for a, an American muscle car is nothing i'm almost positive 200 pounds of it is just the, the front seats alone with how heavy they are with all the leather and the power and all that stuff i believe it i believe it so I, I pulled a I pulled a seat out of the lexus rx 300 that we had once and i almost couldn't even lift it that's I, how heavy it was with all the shit in it yeah the Z, i eat glue says the z06 overheats it in, it does indeed overheat the z011 le does not overheat um but i i'm almost positive the car would be 150 pounds lighter if i took out both front seats and put in like Side belt or Sparco, like car, not carbon fiber seats, but even fiberglass seats. I have, I have no doubt. <laughs> yeah, Kirky, you got to put Kirky's in Kirky seat in the American <laughs> automotive machine with aluminum. Keep it American. We got to do aluminum. <laughs> now we're going to do no Alcantara leather <laughs> covers. We're going to do Monaga hide. We got our Monaga hide Kirky racing seat number three. Do it for Dale. Do it for Dale. <laughs> it is Let her rip girl. tater chip. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, Jay, put a Nismo sticker on it. <laughs> oh God, no! I asked if I put a, uh, if I asked if I put a Nissan uh, logo on it. If I could run our cl- in our class one, with the, which is what our GTR guys are. <laughs> I, I think some of the guys might notice. <laughs> it's an engine swap. <laughs> By the way, guys, yes, I do love uh, Cletus McFarland. If you realize that's who I was doing right there, Cletus, I love Cletus. He is my favorite car channel by far. He's I've got, never, you know, I've never driven a 700 horse. I'm, I'm trying to think of all the cars that I've driven everything other than an electric car, which is like completely the exception of the rule and it weighed 1200 pounds more. Nick, uh, or, I mean, Jerry, in that? the dry at 70 miles an hour on the freeway, if I okay. put my foot in it, I leave black on the freeway. Okay. I spin it's, the tire. I spin the tires at 70. I've witnessed. <laughs> that is 
That is just like earth moving torque. <laughs> it's you, a stupid amount of torque. You could spin tires the way I spun tires on my stock tires. On my stock yeah, wheels. Oh, yeah. It's 400 pounds, roughly 400 pounds more than my Subaru. Yeah. Which, which isn't an insignificant amount of weight. That's a lot of weight. But then when you consider that my car completely tuned at the top of what it can do without me wrenching on the engine, I'm putting out 333 horsepower. Let me, let me go ahead and boggle your mind a little bit more. Okay. So it's that heavy of a car, which already gives you more traction. Right. Yep. It is 70 miles an hour doing a rolling burnout, leaving ta- leaving black strips on the freeway in the tire. That's 325 millimeters wide. That's a 60 tread wear R compound race tire. Flintstones. So, <laughs> I mean, it's like, think about that. <laughs> we should put that's we should put some like 225s on the back. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. <laughs> no, that's a bad idea. <laughs> I, I like driving cars where I can drive it absolutely at its limit all the time and not risk death. And I feel like my STI is even maybe even a tiny bit above where that would be. I can't even imagine how I'd restrain myself with 700 horsepower. I'd probably wouldn't even tires wouldn't last a week. We were leaving the gym yesterday and uh, we stopped at Wahoo's because you can get like a like a protein dish there. So okay. I had gotten like jasmine rice and beef and we <laughs> we were leaving and. I forgot that my wife had a, we were in the Camaro and I forgot that my wife had the, like the both styrofoam containers sitting on her lap and I just sent it leaving sideways. She was so pissed. She's like, unless you want this shit to be all over your Camaro, you'll knock that crap off. (laughs) I love my wife to death, but she's not the most stable person in the passenger seat. Meanwhile, I already know how to brace while holding two coffees. Yeah. (laughs) So my wife, bless her heart. Yeah. (laughs) My wife, bless her heart, if you've ever seen like a dog in the back of a truck, that's kind of how my wife is in the passenger seat. She's sort of just at the mercy of all of the centrifugal forces. <laughs> you just hear sliding and slamming. <laughs> yeah, so basically out of my corner of my eye, I just see her like slamming all around in the passenger seat, like hanging on to dinner for dear life. And I look at her with this stupid shit eating grin like, ah, ah, and she was looking at me like, knock it off. <laughs> Well, Jay, you'll you'll know when you scare me in the car because I'm not I'm, I'm not going to show it. I'll just start reading you pace notes again. Cause, <laughs> like, that, that, that's literally that's my uh, that's my poker face tell. Well, here's the best. When I'm scared. I start offering advice to not kill me. Okay, so you would agree that my Z is pretty loud. It is. Okay, Nick, which is louder? It's louder than my Subaru. Which huh? is which is louder, my Z or the ZL one? Oh, the ZL one by far. So the point I'm getting at here is he can read his pace notes. I'm never going to hear him. He won't. <laughs> Is it really even that loud inside of the car, even with all the noise deadening and everything? Yeah. It's pretty loud. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty loud. Have you had any any cops eyeballing you or anything lately? Uh, I did a, I slid past a cop. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see him. Did, 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 did he just like see it was a ZL1? And he's like, nah, I'll never catch him. So I was uh, taking some friends for a ride. And uh, we, got a, we got a guest that just showed up. Do you look for shirts that are like super tight on your man pecs or yeah. your man boobs or your no, wife likes them? My wife likes them. Okay. It under my stomach. <laughs> what is what is that? Oh, is that a goodbye cake for Nick? Oh, oh, he's gonna cry. Good try. Fractal Josh has showed up. He's over. He'll say hi. <laughs> say hi, Josh. Hey, what's up? Yeah, you hear the excitement. Hey, we're here. Hey guys, it's I'm here. Anna's on her way up. Okay. In this uh, voice too, like nobody would ever mistake mm-hmm. him for anybody else. Oh, did they? Oh, oh. That, at least was... I have my parking pass. Sorry. Okay, so <clears throat> I was uh, taking friends for a ride. So we did our last track, our first track session in the car. The next day, uh, everyone kind of came to my house. We're hanging out. We're just talking. And uh, nobody had gone for a ride in the car yet because I, I didn't take anyone for a ride on track. Everyone was driving their own cars. <clears throat> we decided to go get Boba. And on the way back from Boba, it's nighttime, right? It's dark. I can't really see. I'm first at uh, the light to turn left. And light turns green. And my instructor, Stephen Doherty, is in the back seat. Yeah, he's small enough to be able to actually sit in the back seat of this Camaro. And my passenger had the seat pushed forward. So I had three people in this car. And basically, right as I turned the wheel and mashed the gas, he goes, cop, 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 cop. And I didn't see the cop because where I have to sit in that car, my left, the A-pillar of the window blocks all of my 45-degree view out the window because I sit so far back. As I turn the car and rotate it sideways, the car starts to slide as the cop and I make eye contact, and he's he's his parked at the like on the left side, waiting to go like the other direction. 
Fortunately, he was there busy towing another car and standing outside of his car, and he like, wasn't going to come chase me, but basically it was like you hear, boom, so the car's like sliding sideways and then suddenly just straightens out with like a snap as he and I make eye contact, and he gives me the whole like, I'm going to remember you, look. I'm going to remember this car. So literally, I've just kind of driv- driven easy around town ever since then. No, but I was behind you too, and oh, yeah. he was looking at me, because I couldn't stop my gurgling from my pipes. So it's like, <laughs> I'm like, uh... We had just had boba, so your pipes were gurgling? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you should drop well, it. I'm the exhaust from the Z. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, there's people bitching about car talk. They always do, though. That's, that's, that's why we do it. It's not original to bitch. It's like, if you're a viewer complaining on YouTube, you're actually the norm. Yeah, you're literally copying other people, man. How does, it, how does it copy people. other people? Stop Air it. quotes. Stop it. You're being just like everybody else that bitches. <laughs> I suddenly want to see Jay outrun some cops. <laughs> I can't outrun a Motorola. <laughs> I had I had a really close call uh, about two weeks ago where uh, I don't know if I ever took you for a ride on that really windy road that's near my house. Where, I mean, it's just super, super windy. It's not the one that goes up a hill, but it's mm-hmm. one that just, you know, there's not a straight spot in the entire so. three miles. Okay, I think that was that was probably... I'm not going to say. But anyways, uh, I'm dry. I, I haul ass around that thing when it's dry and it's late at night and there's somebody I can put on my high beams and just go. I come around a corner and I see some light where I normally don't see any light, but I can't see any car or anything. And I go driving by probably doing about 45 around a corner that was a 15. Mm-hmm. And I look in my rear view mirror and it's the damn cop spotlight. He was parked back in a bush, like like literally backed his car into the brush between him and this little power station thing. And he had his spotlight on. He didn't turn it on when I went by. It was already on when I came around the corner. And so I'm looking at my <laughs> rearview mirror, giant spotlight. So I so I slow down the car. Um, I you know start you just waiting for him to basically come. <laughs> he never did. Oh, weird. Never did. He was sitting there. The, the light was shining at me. It wasn't moving. Maybe he was outside of the car or something like that. But yeah, no, he had that super bright ass spotlight shining at me as I was driving away from him down the road as I went around the corner. And I was like, oh, I was just waiting for him. He never he never did anything. I was like, yes. Maybe he was taking a leak. He might have been. <laughs> Honestly, that's that's a weird place to try and like nab somebody. It, it's just, it was so weird. Like it was back. It, it was like in the brush. There was no spot. There was no driveway. There was no little parking space or anything. He just wedged his car back in the brush. And I was like, Alex oh, Jacobson it, says, I'll see you at CamaroCon bringing the 87 IROC Z. Um, so yeah, CamaroCon is actually a week from this Saturday. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be one of the featured cars at the Fast Tech booth. And so you can come and check out my car there. Um, uh, speaking of Camaros, though, I had a I had a 1990 RS, which was at the time it was a five liter throttle body injected, um, and then I had a 92 Camaro Z28, which again, unfortunately, was a 5.0 because I couldn't afford a 5.7. So yeah, this is actually my third Camaro, but um, yeah, it's my first Alpha body though. It's a lot of fun. I saw you turn on your voice thing. What are you about to do? No, no, when, no. I was I was gonna ask when Camaro Com was because I was gonna I was gonna pimp it for you. Oh yeah, so it's on it's on Saturday, April 28th. All right, here we go. Come to CamaroCon on April. What's what day was it again? <laughs> Camaro, Camaro, CamaroCon April twenty eighth. In uh, it's at, it's at the Promenade in Temecula. Did the pr- Temecula? <laughs> Did the Promenade in Temecula? You can't even say Promenade. You say Promenade. Whatever. Bring a Mustang. Piss them off. <laughs> there will be some Mustangs there, I think. It's, it's, uh, oh it? man! It's so you got to bring your mullets and bring your bud. Mullets. <laughs> bring you can't come sister. to CamaroCon without a mullet wig. No, 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 no. It's, it's bring your sister and your wife. Same person. Oh, yeah. what, <laughs> what's your guys' first car? My first car was a 1985 fuel-injected Ford Ranger pickup truck. Standard cab, standard bed. Good man. Wait, first Good car, man. like, to drive or owned? Like, the first car that, like, I guess was your car to drive. Oh, mine was a Volkswagen. Oh, oh, hold on, Jake. <laughs> Let's do let's do both. What was the car that you learned to drive in? Like what was the, what was the car that you actually got your driver's license in? The eighty five Ford Ranger. My dad was like, "You're gonna drive a stick." Okay, so you literally bought the truck that you went. No, to. Okay. it was a it was a hand me down third generation. <laughs> <laughs> I had a hand me down third generation eighty five Ford Ranger, but it worked. So Nick, it what did. did you what did you learn to drive in, and then what was the first car you actually bought? The one or I took the, the test in was a two thousand four Honda Accord. Okay. The one I drove after the test was a 2004 Ford Expedition. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the friend eater. <laughs> yeah. He actually yeah. ran over his friend with it. <laughs> oh, my God. Like hey. He literally, he, okay, so I guess they were at. We were at the paintball park. You're at the paintball park, and, and 
Jake jumps on the side like SWAT. The side rails, yeah. Yeah, so he's standing on the side of it like SWAT. Nick thinks it's a good idea to just yank the wheel and turn real sharp. Friend falls under. Leg goes under the back wheel. Yeah. <laughs> He, he, he Nick walks. is the only he's guy okay. here that could probably say he's ran over his friend with a car. But I didn't get paid. Like, all yeah. those memes say, like, would you run over your friend for X amount of money? Like, I've No, done Nick it. will do it for free. Let's do it. To <laughs> <laughs> be fair, though, anybody that gets their first driver's license and gets into an expedition is going to run somebody over and probably not even know about it. It's no. like a hidden Mustang thing, you know? People hunting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was, it was probably that. It had a little bit of the Ford blood in there. Is what yeah, it was. I got that Ford mixture. Okay. But after that, the first car I owned was the Volkswagen the 2004 GTI. So the car oh. I took on dates, well, because my Ford, my Ranger was kind of like a work in progress. It's how it ended up purple on accident. <laughs> Did I ever tell that story? No. So my dad was like, okay, when I was 15, I was joking around. I was like, what car are you going to buy me when I'm 16? He's like, you can have the truck. I'm like, haha, no, really. He's like, no, you can have the truck. It had been sitting with like a blown engine for like a year because my, my sister overheated the crap out of it one day and was driving home. She's like, the car, the truck's acting funny. I walk outside, there is steam billowing from under the hood. I walk out there just in time to see her take the garden hose and start spraying the engine. I'm not even kidding. She sprayed Oops. the engine and cracked the block because oh, it was yeah. overheated and she put cold water on it. Oh. So my dad was basically like, if you want a car, you'll, fix, you'll learn how to fix the Ranger and you'll drive it. Because my dad was a computer programmer. He didn't know how to fix cars. He was like, I'll be damned if you're going to spend money on fixing cars when, like I have. So you're gonna, he's, he bought me a manual and he said, I'll buy the parts. You learn how to fix it. So my, I spent basically the whole summer uh, before I turned um, 16 the next year, like rebuilding the truck. And he was like, okay, so as your 16th birthday, what I'll do is I'll get the truck painted for you. So we went down to Mako, you know, like Earl Scheib, get myself my 399 paint job. No clear <laughs> yeah. coat, no nothing, just paint, okay. base paint. What application <laughs> runs everywhere? Yeah, I've, I've had a Mako paint job before. So I wanted midnight blue. I wanted like a metallic midnight blue. And it was the best shade, the best shade of midnight blue you ever saw indoors under fluorescent light. <laughs> Outdoor in the sun, the other hand, that shit was purple. <laughs> <laughs> so it was Royal Sapphire Metallic Pearl. I'll never forget the name because it was a Ford color. You remember those purple Ford Tacomas? Yeah. It was I that do. color. Ford Tacoma. Oh, God. Or no, I mean, right. I mean Toyota, Toyota Tacoma. Ford okay. Tacoma, yeah. Okay. See, that was the problem. <laughs> that was the problem. That I was looking at the, the domestic it was import. Ford Tacoma Type R. <laughs> so yeah, it was a USDM. Royal Sapphire Metallic Pearl. You guys can go look it up on Google right now. You'll see exactly what color it was. It kind of looked like the Twitch logo. So anyway, um, went to pick up the car, drove up into the parking lot, and I'm like, hey, look, there's another Ford Ranger here. Someone got theirs painted purple. And I walk in, and we walk in, and they're like, okay, I'm going to pick up my truck. And he walks me out to that car. I was like, no, that's not You're the like, color I chose. He's like... Yeah, that's the color you chose. He's like, this This is the paint code. I was like, no, I wanted midnight blue. He's like, yeah, this one. And so we, I'm like, no, this is not the color I chose. So we go inside. And he's like, okay, well, I mean, we can repaint it, but you got to wait like 30 days. You have to wait for the paint to cure. So they can't just go sanding it down and repainting it right away. I guess you could, if, but this is, again, Mako we're talking about here. It's Mako. They can hit it with a garden hose and paint it again. <laughs> <laughs> so we walk inside. He's like... I grabbed the little color palette, and I'm like, that's the one I wanted. He's like, that's the one it is. I'm like, no, it's not. It's blue. So we walk outside, and I then see the magic of color change when you move from fluorescent light to sunlight. And I was like, oh, crap. So in the 30 days or so that I had the car, that my dad was like, fine, I'll, I'll pay to get it repainted. They were only going to charge us like half price to change the color, right? Because they had done all the prep, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so many people told me, no, keep the color. I ended up keeping it. The problem was I became kind of a laughingstock in high school as the guy with the purple truck. So I would have just owned it, dude. I put no fear stickers on it. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember no fear? I do. I do. I still was a hot pink though. I had so. no fear and it had the skull and everything. It was pretty awesome. Wow, total bro it out. <laughs> <laughs> the bro build. The only thing I was missing was the metal militia stickers yeah. <laughs> that didn't exist yet. And some uh, so, motocross bikes in the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do yeah. Did you ever actually use your truck as a truck? It was a two-wheel drive, of course not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it had a lift. <laughs> it had a lift and like 31 inch tires, which was huge on that truck. So, so I basically learned how to drive a whole bunch of cars when I was learning to drive. I drove a 1976 Ford Courier, uh, which was the smallest truck I think I've ever seen in my entire life. It was so light that me and my dad actually were able to pick up the back of the truck. And so my sister could get under there and put tires underneath it to set it on so we could do the brakes because we didn't have a jack. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the truck that I learned how to drive a manual in. But the vehicle that I drove, that I took the test in, was a Ford, an old Ford Taurus that was an automatic. Because it's always easier to pass your test in an automatic, right? Less True. to think about. So I did that. And then after that, my uh, my 76 Ford Courier, 
my mom wouldn't let me drive it because it was a manual and I was still kind of learning how to drive manual at the time. So she made me drive her freaking uh, Chrysler Cordoba. Do you remember those? Oh, yeah. I know the Cordoba. Yeah, like 20. I think it was like 22, 22 feet long or something yeah. like that. And it had a giant 440 block uh, V8 in it with two carburetors. And it it was just a beastly, beastly car. But it just floated down the road. And you never felt connected to anything. It just felt like you were in a giant boat and just trying to keep it between the lines. But that's what I drove until I could start driving the truck. And then I, I uh, drove the truck so much that the master cylinder on it failed twice. And I almost wrecked both times. So I sold it to dude for, I think, like 150 bucks. Like, I didn't get much for it. And then I got a Ranger, too. Except for mine was a 19... I think mine was a 1989 Ford mm. Ranger XT. So it had a little bit more square front end. Yeah, yeah. It was a less it was aggressive fun. looking one. Yeah. Yep, exactly. John and then Z I in chat says, this whole show has been car talk. Come on, guys. You're almost 40. Let go of this midlife crisis of racing cars. Whoa. I'd like to point out he doesn't have an actual profile picture because he knows he'll get wrecked if he shows Whoa. his face in chat. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. It's, he's one of those guys that get, puts on his little trench coat. Once you're into cars, you're in it for life, dude. Why don't you stop <laughs> playing with your computers, man? You're not a kid. <laughs> You know, it's funny. I, I have been noticing that a lot lately that the people, they come on Twitter and want to like talk shit. You always click on their profile and it's literally just a new profile with some random name, no avatar yeah. and the only tweets are to you. I mean, at least we put ourselves out there and we don't hide anything like all these people that come and talk shit to you. They do it behind anonymity because they can't actually take the heat that will come back their way. Yeah. Don't be a pussy. If you want to be a dick, be a dick to my face. That's that's the best way to do it. Someone wants to know what your shirt says. Yeah, it says I'm pretty sure right. his shirt says fuck cancer. What does it say? And the cells. Oh, they and wrote the cells. It on. They wrote on. Wrote in on. Fuck cancer. And the cells. It's my. It's my brand new shirt. I just put up on the shop today. Yeah. So, <clears throat> sell them wares. So if you guys hate cancer, buy my shirts. There you go. Now, uh, to be fair, Nick is only twenty six, turning twenty seven in June. He looks thirteen. I'm the one turning thirty seven. Oh, thanks, Jerry. <laughs> you should see when he shaves his face. Like when he actually shaves, he looks like he's twelve. I could get those happy meals. <laughs> I'm curious. Hold on. Let's ask a question. If no, if nobody knows in chat how old I am, who who looks younger, me or Jay? Oh, shut up. See this. I want to. I just want to. It's obvious that's, who's younger now based on like that question. It's like a given, just because like he can't win. <laughs> I have right, two daughters. Know. Of course, I'm gonna have gray hair, and I'm your friend. That's where the roughness comes from. <laughs> wow, dude, all this gray is you, dude. All what this gray. gray is oh, all that gray. Shut up. Oh, you can't see it in the light, but no, it's. Oh, it's, shut it's, up. You have less gray than I did at 13. I'm not I'm not the silver fox that you're becoming, but I'm uh, I'm getting there. You know, what's what's kind of entertaining, though, is is watching the people in chat that try to contribute to car talk, but they have no car knowledge. I mean, that's OK. We all started with no knowledge, but it's like don't offer opinions if you don't know car stuff. Oh. Jerry is older, looks younger. Wait, Jerry, yeah. where did you learn Off opinions on all kinds of shit? I don't know. When did Go you learn it. to drive stick, though? Like, was it your dad taught you? Uh, Yeah, my dad taught me when I was about 15 years old. Oh, OK, you have that up on me. Yeah, and it was uh, and the Ford Ranger had four, it had a four speed in it, and the clutch pedal didn't feel like it was attached to anything. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I said, "You have that up on me," because his dad taught him. Jake taught me how to drive steak. Oh, but he said, "Was it the dad?" That he had <laughs> 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 wow. It's a bit too soon, but okay. Hey, we didn't do a cake, so, you know, like, do a little one. Yeah, sure. I don't know. They're, they're talking shit to each other, I guess. My dad ever did. That, that was the only thing my dad ever did that was actually, like, nice. You know what I'm kind of... You know what drive. I think is really ironic? Is the amount of people in chat that say I look older than I am. I can see my analytics. I can see how old my average viewer is. And the sad part is, most of the people are older than me. Like, believe it or not, mo okay, so yeah, and I ain't exactly attracting the 16-year-old female gamer viewer, right? You could be if they're into it. But my 65 and older oh, female viewership God. is like 11%. <laughs> you made crap videos, that would change. But no, I mean, it's like, it's like I don't understand why so many people get so caught up, so caught up on like the age and thing. If Yeah, I got gray hair, and I look a little bit rough around the edges, but if you knew me when I was like really, really big... Trust me, I, I would take this body over that body any day. You know who else has gray hair, but still really young? Uh, engineering Explained, but you don't like the way he talks when he explains stuff. Mm, it's just too slow. The whiteboard uh, guy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's he doesn't look that old to me, though. I don't think he's that old. I just I just don't like his talking mannerisms. I don't mind it. <laughs> well, because you two talk the same. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I'm looking Touché. at my core demographic by month. In this month, it's 25 to 34. Is that the number of viewers? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help it. <laughs> Sorry, Jerry. No he, did, he, didn't, he didn't mean <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, he did. <laughs> 
Uh, I couldn't help it. That one was set up too perfectly. Dude. Oh, hold on, hold on. Don't, don't, don't forget, you have to upload videos to get viewers. <laughs> and how many subs have you lost today? Those are the other, the other things you should probably throw in. We had there. a couple of green days this month. Well, it's usually when I'm moderating, he loses subs. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. He doesn't. Can you ban in everybody? Yeah. He doesn't wield the ban hammer, he hits the ban nuke, is what he does. And there's a lot of collateral damage at times. I've actually heard Nick be like, oops, I, ban I accidentally banned him. And then it's like, oh, can't undo because it disappears. <laughs> So Nick has banned innocent he's, people on accident. No, and it's I've, I've actually damage. It's part of war. On Twitch also, it's like, oh, just make it easy. Like, create a little list and just keep it for the show, so you can go back and unban them for whatever reason if you How want. How are we supposed to keep a list, especially when that, like, they're usually <laughs> fake accounts with like a bunch of numbers and stuff? There's, I remember one <laughs> no. time there's a guy who made like ten accounts that whole hour and just came oh, back, yeah, and I yeah. kept banning him over and over. Yeah. You know, even if he has a script to make the account, it's still faster for you to click hide user than it is for him to script a new e Gmail account. Yeah. You know what I don't understand is they now require to create a Gmail account, which is what they were predominantly using to create the YouTube accounts rapidly. Right. They now make you verify it with an actual phone number and an SMS message. So these people that are creating these accounts and you can't do it with the same number uh, or I think you're limited to like five accounts or something you can do with the same oh, number. So I, have, okay. I have three and yeah, they're all three the, same, well. the same account. Yeah, so it's like after because after a certain amount, it just tells you that you can't do it. You have to use a different number. So I'm like, are these guys actually going out and using some script that's using one of those like online SMS services? And I mean, they, it seems like they're going through a lot of work to create a fake account just to come back and say snarky shit. Like if these people, like if they spent as much time like actually accomplishing something as they put in trying to hate on people, they might actually be something you know more than just you know a sorry sack of shit that's miserable right. in their own skin. Yeah. Well, the good news is they don't bug me as much now that I figured mm -hmm. out that I just sand. I had literally okay. had sand in my mangina, what? so now I got a doctor to pull okay. some sand in my mangina, and I'm doing better now. Nice question. Oh, All Time Tech says I'm going to get my first car this year, and my dad is making me buy it myself. I'm currently looking at either a 1988 Mazda RX-7 for 4,500, or oh, a Nissan 240SX S13 for 5,800. What should I get? That's still drift tax on the S13, though. But it's you don't have to worry about apex seals. Dude, rotary, yeah, ro rotary True. engines, you're going to just eat through those, and you don't want your first car to eat you out of house and What home, he doesn't so. mention, though, is the condition of either of these cars. True. Dude, it's a 240, man. It doesn't matter if it's been on fire before. It'll be fine. You just pop an L LS and go. Yeah, I can't even <laughs> tell you. Like, so, so the sanctioning, like, body of the, of the Time Attack group that we do with the Nissan Challenge, like, the actual, like, company-owned car is an S13. And I can't even tell you how many times they've just, like, use duct tape to keep that thing on track. <laughs> Oh and it gosh. still goes and puts down good times. You put duct tape like on the door seals, just like yeah. push air along it and stuff like that. <laughs> like, wow, this is really technical, but it works, you know? Yeah. Well, it's like the place where I got my dyno tune done on my car, their shop, their, their shop car that they have, that's, they call it Frankenstein because they just they use it for testing motors and drivetrains and everything. 240. Yeah. It just, it's just in there because they said that they can literally throw any motor into it. The and, like, KA24DE is much better. That's what the S13 has for the shop is a KA24. Yeah, yeah. 300,000 miles. The problem is they sound like ass. That's like okay. with the exhaust that they have on that one though, with that header, oh, it's just like painful. <clears throat> I like it, kind of. You would. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He brings it for his life. I do like rotary. Don't get me wrong. I love rotary engines. I'm just saying, for a first car, they 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 burn shitloads of oil, no matter what a state of repair they're in, and they they they're just they're not they're not good first cars. TDS J, have you driven MG cars? Do I look like I could fit in an MG? Not fit in an MG. I've been in an MG like, before, and just to prove I could fit in one, and I got stuck because my body like cramped. Right up. So, yeah. so it was a convertible, obviously, and the convertible top was down, and it was a, it was that like seventies MG, so it looked like a little like little stink bug with a convertible top, yeah. and the top was down, or I'm sorry, up. So I kind of con like basically turned into a contortionist Wait, to get in it. We sit like this, but then I got in it, and I contorted in just such a way that I cramped up, and I couldn't get out. And the thing was, it was when I was working and doing custom star car stereo installs, and I was the only one at the shop at the time. I got stuck in the car. Someone came out and saw me. When, his name was Clinton. He was a complete ass. He was the shop, the shop manager. We got along, but he was just an ass. He came out, saw me, and was just started laughing and then walked away. And I was like, no, dude, I'm stuck. I can't get out. He left me there for like 10 minutes while I went to the bathroom. <laughs> and then he came back and let the top down. Well, I got payback because we, summer in SoCal is hot, and, and Jerry's been here. During the summer, it gets it's always it's always hot there. It gets it's nasty always. hot. So the 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 install bays that we had were not air conditioned. So we had the big roll up doors, right? Think of how, how like a tire shop would look. It was like that, but car stereo installs. And he was doing a custom uh, setup inside like a '66 or '65 Impala, 
And the trunks in that thing are huge, like yeah. massively huge. Like, I could fit three of my bodies in the trunk. They use them as D-Derby cars because of that. Now, the guy was really, like, skinny and linky, and, and he wasn't that tall. He was, he was like, 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, so I guess he was laying down in there, and everyone else was, like, inside the shop eating lunch, or inside the store eating lunch in the shop. I thought no one was there. So I didn't want anyone to take anything out of the trunk because he had, like, expensive, like, amps and stuff sitting there. Yeah. And it was facing the street. So I walked by and just shut the trunk. Just kadunk. <laughs> and now, cars back in the 60s like that, there's a reason why mobsters would carry people around in the trunk. It's not like today where there's a little panic pull tab where you can pull the wire and have the trunk pop open. Let's just say about 25 minutes later, we're all sitting inside the shop going, where the hell is Clinton? Where the hell is Clinton? <laughs> we're calling his cell. It's ringing in the shop. We're like, oh, well, he doesn't have his phone. We're like, maybe he's in the shitter. He's not in the shitter. Like, I don't know. Maybe he walked down to like Arby's or something down the street. Half an hour or so later, right, from when I, I shut the trunk, we go out into the shop and we hear. <laughs> yeah, he's just banging on this thing. I'm like, oh, shit, he's in the trunk. I pop the trunk. He looks like he stepped out of the shower level of sweat, right? Oh my God. He basically sits up and he goes, I'm going to fucking kill you. <laughs> and let's just say he was like, it was one of those like, you're not going to know when and you're not going to know how. But I am going to get you back. Oh and no, he never got me back because the company went out of business like a month later. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, anyway. That was pretty good. You got, you good fellas him? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know he was in the trunk. It wasn't intentional. It was unintentional. Yeah. Jay, what exhaust you got? On what? My Nismo, oh, my Nismo has look, a... Hmm? I, said, I said, look at him. He's dropping the whole two cars, plural thing. Oh, which which car? No, which I car got the truck. Car? I got the Sienna. Oh. I got the Camaro. I got the Nizzy. <laughs> What's uh, on the Sienna? Stock. Oh. For now. <laughs> <laughs> the wife won't let me put an exhaust on it. Remember, I wanted to the day we bought it. We should, we should totally do the TEs on it still. The, uh, the, the 370Z has um, a, motor dyne, a full Motordyne setup. So it's Motordyne test pipes with a Motordyne Shockwave. Motordyne Shockwave TDX or true dual exhaust on it, which is really loud. And then the Camaro, it's actually all stock exhaust except for a muffler delete. Well, it has all four cats in it, and it still has that volume level. Wait till I get the long tube headers on. <laughs> did you, you, did you put an exhaust on the truck? Hmm? Did you put, the, did you put an exhaust on the truck? Yeah, it, yeah. Has, a, <laughs> it has a magna flow. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, That's cool, because I was going to say, I thought, I thought it sounded pretty burly when it's I was down there. It's not that loud. There. It's just a magna flow with, with a cat back that's still, I don't even think it's three inch. I think it's two and three quarters. It's not very loud. <laughs> Ladies. Oh, the cam froze with you making a silly smile. All these oh, we got some saying, where's the tech? Where's the tech? You got any tech you want to talk about, Jay? Um, yeah, Ryzen 2, or second generation launched. Uh, nobody cares about that. AMD's for poor people. <laughs> I got an overclocking video going live tomorrow about it. Oh, here's a good question for you. What do you think of the AMD guy running over to Intel to help them make an integrated graphics thing? You're talking about, about Raja Patel? Yes. He was pushed out of AMD. <laughs> He didn't run to Intel. He was pushed out of AMD. Oh, was he? That's that's the story I got through some sources that are close to the subject but not authorized to comment. Interesting. <laughs> that was okay. la that was like late last year news, dude. No, but I thought. Did it go easy? Hmm? No, hold on. No, been, let me see. Been out loop for a little while. It's okay. It's, it's probably it. it's because whatever project he's been working on probably finally came to fruition. But he this was like late last year. He, remember, he went on sabbatical right after Vega launched. Remember the fiasco with Vega and the whole discount pricing and the pri retail rebate and all that, and everyone was mad about Vega because it looked like a bait and switch with price? He left during that, and he went on sabbatical, and then in December, he announced that he was leaving AMD, and then, like, the week later, it was like, Raja Patel is now at an Intel. I mean, that's not really, it's not really that new. Interesting. Well, I, I just, oh, wait, hold on here. Uh, oh, wait, he's the same guy, the Ra Raja, right? Yeah. Kaduri? Oh, Kaduri. I'm sorry. I say Patel. That's a different yeah. Raja. Um, okay, Raja. Yeah, it's the, it's the same guy, Kaduri, but there is. The, yeah. I mean, it's making rounds again because I mean the the article that I have here was from uh, eleven nine. So yeah, about a half a year ago. Yeah, I remember I told you it was like December was was when it was all kind of like official, but. Oh, I can't believe they put. That's interesting. So they pushed him out, and Intel scooped him up. Rumor has it that there were choices that he made that put AMD in a spot to where they couldn't compete with nvidia based on the price point because vega 56 and vega 64 are great in just kind of like raw power especially when they're leveraged in in very certain circumstances but the problem is the yeah. price of hbm and at the time only samsung was making the memory uh hynix hadn't come online yet 
they were losing money on every single graphics card that got sold, basically. So that's why you saw those bundle deals where you could buy it at a, at a discounted price if you got like a motherboard and a processor and all that. And you, yeah. you even got like $300 off like a FreeSync monitor or whatever. That was the only way they could make money on it because they had to kind of pick up the slack with the other parts that still had actual markup and had some you know points of profit in there. But uh, okay. the, pro- the problem was the Vega 56 and 64 came out and it was a, it was a power hungry card. It, it was hot, it took lots of power. It just didn't compete in the gaming realm which is where, let's face it, the majority of cards that are sold are, are, at least not so much today, but back then were all about gaming. And they just didn't compete very well with the GTX 1070. Well, the 1070 Ti came out, the 56 anyway. The 1070 Ti came out and slid into that $50 price gap. So the, the, within the range of $150, you had three graphics cards to choose from in NVIDIA, and all okay. of which gave better power to performance ratios and overall better FPS than anything being offered by Vega. So Vega launched and just wasn't competitive if you could even get your hands on it. So because of all of that and because Raja was, you know, the whole CEO or chief operating officer, whatever it was for Radeon division, yeah, rumor has it he was squeezed out. And then Lisa Su became the interim, uh, like, COO for that division, and then they brought in a new guy. Gotcha. I'm trying to find there's – it's actually not that guy. This is, this is something even more recent. I'm okay. trying to find the name. Uh, but it was it, the, he was he's joining the Raja guy. He was another graphics guy from AMD, and I'm trying to find his name right now. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised if if Raja was like, "Hey, I know a guy, blah blah blah. We need to grow our team." So, the the interesting part here's the tech guys. I hope you're happy. Open up your ears. <laughs> uh, it's one of those things where because this is in Texas, right? Austin is where AMD is is based, and the question of non compete clause or comes into uh, qu- you know question. Right, because normally you go to a you go to work exactly. for a giant tech company like this, and you're some sort of an exec, or even an engineer, or even a mid-level manager. There's usually in your contract because a lot of these positions, although are at will working states, they still have a contract, um, and the contract states stuff like that, like non-compete. You can't leave our company to go and work for a competitor with in a certain amount of time, yep. right? Five years, ten yep. years, whatever it may be. There's three at Microsoft, but yeah, it was three-year non-compete. Yeah, so whatever whatever it was in the contract. Yep. The thing was within. Within one week to the next, Raja was still on paid sabbatical from AMD. Next thing you know, he's at Intel. Um, from what I understand is they're really hard to enforce. Like here in California, it's, here in California, some people try it as well, but it's easy to wiggle out of it. Like it, it's yes. not easy to enforce. The other thing is if AMD forced them out, I don't know if there's another clause in there that states like you can't force someone out and then be like, you can't work in your field anymore, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think that I think there, that's why it's so easy to combat and work against. But in I, I looked over my contract because I had to do an exit interview when they laid me off from Microsoft. Right. And in the contract, it said that my non-compete doesn't matter if they lay me off or fire me, that I'm not allowed to work in that specific field of the industry. Yeah, so I because, can't be, because they're afraid that you're going to bring trade secrets over. Right. Right. So now, oh, now I found the guy. It's Chris Hook. Oh, Chris Hook. <laughs> so Chris Hook, uh, <laughs> and it was April 11th updated. Uh, he said, okay, senior director. Okay, I'm, 20 gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm glad you, I'm glad you said that. Okay. Yeah. Do you guys remember in chat, longtime viewers, do you remember when I put out my video talking about the Vega pricing issue? And I basically was like, here's what AMD told me. They called me late at night on a Sunday night because I put out those tweets saying, if they're doing bait and switch on pricing, I'm not going to work with AMD anymore. And then I said, a source called me and was like, Hey Jay, this is the way it's happening. We, you know, we understand the, the, the public is mad and I'm going to explain the back end pricing yep. and I'm going to explain the, you know, what they call it, the activating of being able to sell it at standard MSRP without the bundles and all that. It was Chris Hook. Chris Hook is the one who called me. The thing was at the time I had to say that I couldn't name him as a source because he would get in trouble. But the bottom line is Chris Hook is the one that called me at 1138 at night on a Sunday to talk about this because that's the level of bombardment AMD was after. So Chris Hook was the guy yeah. who called me. He's the bald guy with and glasses. According to this, he left of his own accord, and it says that there's speculation that he's joining Raja at Intel for the discrete <laughs> GPU. And so when I put out my video saying my source is rock solid, it does not get any more solid than my source was, and people were calling me like, oh, you're full of shit. You don't have a rock solid source. It was Chris fucking Hook. It doesn't get much higher in Radeon at that point. So yeah. Wow. Dang. <laughs> so they're losing, wow, they're, so they're, losing, they're losing some power here then. 
Because yeah. this, this is a higher up guy in the AMD graphics division, and he's picked up by Intel too. Wow, <laughs> this is weird because you'd think that if two high ranking officers at AMD went and worked at a competitor, not not only just a competitor, but working on arguably the same technology at the competitor that competes directly with what they were doing, but you'd think they would push some lawyers at that and make a big fuss. Maybe, but I mean, let's look at it this way too. Um, AMD CPU division is doing pretty damn well the last two years. Um, yeah. The Radeon side, not so well, not so good. I mean, when's the last time you saw a new Radeon card? Before that, what was the last time you saw a new Radeon card? It was the RX series, the RX 570 and 580, and then 560 and all that, which was just a generational refresh of the RX 470, 480, which came out a year and a half before that. So you're not seeing these consistent, you're not seeing these consistent new cards and new technologies being pumped out. As I say, new technologies loosely, because because Nvidia has now been using for two straight years the same Pascal architecture. But at least they're putting out improvements and stuff on that card. You have a huge stack to choose from. Radeon, if you're an exec in that, if you're an exec in that company, right? Yeah. It, it, high end execs, execs and companies like this, they get huge per- performance incentives and bonuses and stuff. And if you're not selling, if you're not making any money in that division as as an executive, you're not making any money either. You might have your base pay, but then you're probably on the chopping block every single time you go to some damn staff meeting or some sort of exec meeting. Right, probably a lot of fingers being pointed around, a lot of people, you know, biting each other's heads off. I have no doubt yeah. that that's what it's like in the Radeon division right now in the executive team. So it makes no, it, it doesn't surprise me one bit that he moved over to Intel because Intel is still trying to bolster its internal graphics. It's trying to compete with Nvidia, which is why they teamed up with AMD for the new mobile CPUs with built-in Vega graphics in an Intel CPU, which pissed off Nvidia to no end. You know what, though? I'm thinking this. I mean, this is highly speculative, but I'm thinking it out and it actually could work. It might be possible that Intel is is poising itself to buy AMD's graphics division. Oh, and I these don't think so. Scouts. I don't think so. think so. I don't think so. Why buy the division when you can just bring the team? Let's no, no, but on, the same thing happened with Nokia yeah, and Microsoft. Saying. It's not uncommon for a company to actually hire the higher up executives if they're behind the scenes trying to work a deal before they make it public. So that those people basically come over and make the merger uh, right. smoother. But I don't think that I don't think they have any interest in buying Radeon. If they believe that Radeon is a is a ship with a hole in it right now, just just bring the just bring the intelligence. That's all they're going to want. Oh no, no, but 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 all the all the tooling and all the technology and everything is what they would want. I mean, big companies buy shitty companies all the time, just literally just to adopt their name think, and their. Do you, but do you think Intel really has to retool? Big, enough to to warrant trying to buy all of their tooling factories and stuff intel sucks they, they don't do anything in the gpu space except for the integrated graphics stuff which is absolute garbage i think intel this is one area they, they don't have strength okay how about this which is cheaper then do you think buying radeon which you know amd is not going to want to give up for pennies on the dollar they're going to try and get 14 or 15 bucks for it i mean obviously yes <laughs> at least two starbucks worth but <laughs> look, <laughs> if if you're intel let's look at it this way if yeah. you're Intel, which do you think is cheaper to just buy, bring over the talent and then spend your own capital on the tooling or paying for the talent and the company from your competitor who knows they're going to they're you know they're going to want to they're going to want to shark the value of the company. Sure. So huh. which do you think is cheaper, buying the company outright or getting enticing the talent and tooling it yourself? Are we for, for me? thinking I Mr. Think Business I, management, I, management Major, let's oh hear it. Oh my gosh, are we thinking short term or long term? Well, of course it's long term. Well, okay, sure. so I think long term, you could get get the the staff, get the intel. You don't have to get the assets that go get with it. Get the intel? Sure. Yeah, whatever. Air quotes. You know what I'm talking about. Be the IP, yeah. Get, get the employees, because yep. they're going to build you up to that future ROI instead of buying the assets and everything to get the like short term ROI and then losing out sure. the long end. So, but Intel doesn't have a foothold for GPU stuff. AMD does. Well, they don't have a foothold, but they much more than Intel does. Wouldn't they want the name? Isn't the name important here? Having the name Radeon, having the name AMD Graphics I don't, or whatever. It's- no. I don't think right now AMD Radeon Graphics um, has the sweetest flavor amongst yeah, I think, the enthusiasts. I think it's kind of a coin toss because you're going to get the, the diehards yeah. like, oh, I want this because AD, or Radeon's backing it. But then you're going to want the, the cutting edge p- adopters like, hey, perfect this example. Is new. How many times have you seen people be like, God, I remember when Radeon was good when ATI owned them, right? So Radeon's name, 
unfortunately, ever since AMD has acquired them, it's a bit tarnished. has been tarnished and diluted. Yeah, no, I can agree with that. I was just thinking that it's it's well, and the, I guess I guess the other thing I'm not really taking into account here is Intel might not have a huge name when it comes to graphics, but they are a huge name. I mean, they are a household name. Right. So if they just suddenly came out swinging and said, oh, we're now making graphics, you know, hardware that can compete with NVIDIA, they'd be fine standing on their own. They wouldn't they wouldn't need an intermediate to basically make that look juicier than it is. I still don't think Intel, even with AMD's help, is going to be able to compete with NVIDIA's mobile graphics, uh, their max Q. And I want to rant about that for a second. We're going to go Jay's Rant 30. Are you ready? Do it. Grind your gears, buddy. When I was at Computex last year, they, and you were with me during this, Jen Sun gets up in his little polished leather jacket and talks about the Max-Q 1080. And what a great uh, CP or GPU it is and mobile compute and uses blah, 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 less power and yada, yada, yada. Prior to that, Jerry, you know this. They were putting 980Ms inside of laptops, right? Which yep. was the mobile variant. I, ha I have one in The mind. only yep. reason it even shared the name 980 is because it was basically the designator to say it's the highest end mobile chip, but it shared nothing in common with the standard 980. Nope, Then Much for low. like a hot minute, they put full-size 980 chips inside of GPUs after the 980 Ti was already out. I mean in the laptops, after the 980 Ti was already out. Yep. Then they came out and put full-blown GTX 1080, which again was a 170 watt chip, uh, graphics inside of, of laptops. I've got one. Uh, I've got one downstairs. Brian has one, right? They're powerful, but they're still a bit hot and they're in big, Noisy. big giant chassis and stuff. So NVIDIA was touting how efficient Pascal was and how amazing it is for mobile gaming and stuff and how the M variant doesn't need to be a thing anymore. Then they changed the name of the M and call it Max Q and do the same damn thing. It's a 1070 that's slower than a regular 1070, and a Max-Q 1080 that's only about the speed of a GTX 1060, you know, six gig. So it's one of those things where it's like, in, in NVIDIA back. pulls that shit again, where they just change the name to make you think it's something better than it was, but they're back to the whole mobile platform, mobile graphics chip again, and just calling it something different. And, and so that's a rant of mine. But anyway, segue. I've heard of throttling problems too with the with the full-blown chips in the mm -hmm. laptop chassis that's up to the manufacturer of the laptop it depends on the type of cooling i mean nvidia was very strict on the, the level of cooling that it has to be um they're also very strict with max q like they they are hands-on big time and have to approve the chassis they'll bring the chassis and they'll do all the testing like let's say Got sager it. dynamics or whoever makes it msi nvidia has to get hands-on with it and approve it to be a max q if it doesn't if it doesn't get the the approval then gotcha. usually they'll put like a full size 1070 or whatever in there. But to segue into my other my other problem here is uh, this tech talk is too tech, not enough BS. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> so anyway, my point being, even the Vega graphics that I would expect to see inside of a mobile CPU, um, although you could probably get MacBook Air size laptops that are capable of playing you know 1080p medium to low settings at 60 FPS. I still don't think they're going to compete with Intel enough to entice gamer mobile buyers to buy that because they're still not doing like with, with the Intel partnership, they're not doing discrete graphics with Intel. Remember they're taking the Vega core, like we're seeing with the 2400 G and the 2200 G yeah. and they're yeah. putting that into a mobile chip. So it doesn't need a discrete graphics card. So you can get the ultra thin, ultra lightweight keep, you know, basically your Microsoft surface Two level of laptop that can actually play games. Right. So it's a whole different market. And I have, I have a feeling that that's what Intel's trying to build up by getting guys like Raja and Chris Hook and all that. Yeah, and plus I think if they, if they did it right, I think they actually have like a really sporting chance of creating something that can compete with the discrete graphics cards without having to be discrete. But AMD still has to improve that, that uh, power draw from Vega. Well, again, if Intel doesn't buy them, then the, Intel's good with power. And yeah. Intel's got the power game on lockdown compared to the other companies. So as long as they can get the guys from AMD to come in with some of the information on how to how their graphics processing stuff works, I'm sure Intel could like fix that shit overnight. I don't know why AMD is having such a problem. It could just be a matter of like technology maturity too. I mean, Intel just yeah. has more money to throw at the problem and probably has better equipment that makes better and more consistent dies and AMD just doesn't can't can't compete on that level. For the for so the longest can, time AMD was like two generations behind Intel on the CPU side. They are significantly farther back than that on the Radeon graphics side. I'm not talking about Vega. I'm talking about like their their mainstream like the RX stuff. Not yeah. R, I guess RX Vega is what they call it. Like the 580 570 
I mean, they're still significantly behind where that's barely competing with like 980 and 980 Ti stuff. So, I don't know. I guess time will tell. But anyway, um, well, I guess the way we end the show with tech, that was weird. Yeah, way to go. That makes almost no sense. <laughs> All of it was just BS. I had no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of what I said there is definitely speculation. So, I mean, there is that. But anyway. Yeah, I mean, we don't need for sure Chris Huck's going to Intel, but I, 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 I would bet on him going to Intel at this but point. But he was a he was a pretty high end like marketing guy there. He was pretty he was pretty high up. Like if you got information from Chris, it was it was solid. You know? Yeah, it said he's senior director of global product marketing. Are we supposed so, to yeah. show the cake? Oh, let me see it. It's the cake. I want to see the cake. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it says happy birthday. <laughs> it's close they, enough. Look, they got Nick a cake. It's a Hello Kitty birthday cake. Look at that. <laughs> Look at all those kitties. Are they edible kitties or are they rings? They're rings, dude. <gasps> I want one. No. <laughs> it's my, I'll, give, right. I'll give you a ring. Guys, we're going to go. If you just joined us, uh, watch the beginning of the show. I talk about why Nick is leaving. Basically, um, Nick has a very unique set of skills and talents. That, I'll, uh, I'll find you and I will kill you. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so no, Nick is, Nick is pursuing other opportunities that actually allow him to use his education that, uh, wasn't cheap. No, no. Uh, if, it, if it doesn't work <laughs> out, he'll probably find a way to weasel back on the show, so, you know. Hey, uh, Jay, Jay, one last thing, though, make sure before you let him go that he signs a no-compete. <laughs> you can't go over to Linus Tech. Actually, go to Linus. Oh go to Linus. You bring what you brought me to Linus, please. <laughs> you know what would be funny is if you see him on Austin's channel, like, in a week? <laughs> I would actually write you a letter of recommendation for any channel you would like to be on. I don't believe you. Like you just had that, you had that grin on your face. Like this is gonna be good. <laughs> like, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll text him in like ninety days and be like, "So, how's the new guy working out?" No, hey Jerry, let me know when you get a car to or cargasm going again. <laughs> and I'll, I'll, I'll fly up there. You can work on cargasm with me for a subway sandwich, and you can sleep in my garage. <laughs> with the Subaru? It's, or? It's not, he's not even going to pay for the sandwich. He has one of those, like, buy one, get one free's. Yeah, it'll be a buy one, get one free. You can sleep in the Subaru. How about that? Even better. You can sleep in the... Because you can't have the car in the garage and you in the garage at the same time. You know, the amount of moss on it, though, would probably be pretty soft and comfy. I'd probably it end up cleaning it sooner or later. Dude, it's so gross. Now, the paint the paint literally just blow on it and it comes off. So I need to get that thing wrapped. <laughs> well, you got to get the paint fixed first before you wrap it. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm just gonna spray it. With, I'm just. I'm just gonna sand no, it down. No, just wrap it. Just wrap it the way. It, wrap it the way it is. <laughs> Don't listen to Jay. Better yet, plastic dip it. <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> I thought about doing that. I'm not gonna tackle that though. You fuck that up. It's a pain in the ass. So I don't want. I don't want to mess with it. Yeah. Anyway, you guys will still see Nick around here and there. He's still gonna contract and do some stuff. You know that we need when when we need it. But now I've got to figure out where he put everything because he's the one that moved everything around in the store. In the storage I created unit. a scavenger hunt as my going away gift. Yeah, and apparently he swaps cables so he and power supply boxes ever? too. <laughs> Oh, that's, oh the, that's the game I gotta oh play now gosh. is which cable goes to which PSU and go. <laughs> Will it fry? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I'm running that outro. All right. Thank you for uh, stopping by Tech Talk number 158. Um, 158. Yeah, go away. We we just can't handle them anymore. So he's gonna go work for uh, some drug dealers in Southern California. So money's so money. Yeah. Right? Money's money. <laughs> Money. It doesn't matter if it's a nickel or a quarter. Money's money. <laughs> oh Go to the con. $20 Go to is $20. So. There's no Wi-Fi in the club? No Wi-Fi in the club. <laughs> All right, guys. Talk to you later.